speaking of trains past, bring up a Maristar, and we'll just laugh all night oh, about it. Oh, gosh. What size screws are they? And there's an hour of laughter right there. You just don't uh, know how where's your bad Phillips? that plague was that that got on us like that. You just don't know what Ingersoll Rand did to our industry. I mean, you know from the outside, but you just couldn't believe what that was just the most terrible thing. And you know they're still doing it. They still Medea still makes don't they make that ox box? No. I think the uh, ox Medea box, makes a lot of them though. Well the run true I know that's in Tyler, Texas. I saw it. And I know that's where it's made. It's a cheap train in a cheap jacket. Now, that's what a run-through is. Now, doesn't American Standard side, don't they sell Oxbox? Or is Oxbox the one that goes out to outside distributors? Now, Oxbox, I thought, was like the outside one. But, you know, I've never put in Oxbox. Medea? I never saw an Oxbox. I, I thought oh, that didn't. most of those okay. were Medea. I thought Medea made most of those. Like run the Ameristar that came later was Medea. All the Ameristars were Medea since early on. Early on, they looked just like just well, budget trains. I'll, I'll tell you this. Since Ingersoll Rand was involved, all of the Ameristars were Medeas. And that's when Ameristar was a product line. Now, prior mm -hmm. to that, many years ago, and I've had several arguments with people that just can't understand, the Ameristar was not a product line. It was a particular unit. Um, and it was on those cubes. There was even some of those cubes. Now, it was on the American Standard side, not on the train side. But it was called an Ameristar. So that's where that name came from. But Medea made them after it became a whole product line. Mm -hmm. And so people get those two mixed up and say, no, I can prove it. Train makes it. Train makes it. Train never made the first Ameristar. Those were all Chinese-made Medea products. And just because we made the air handler here and the furnace here and didn't paint it and put a Maristar on it, they they want to hang on a technicality. But that's not the bad part. The bad part was the condensers that failed and leaked and the coils. Those were made in China. Mm -hmm. And no, that's uh, right. Definitely that, Chinese. That was the problem with that product line. And I'm glad they got the run, the run true. I don't sell them, but I'm glad they got it. You know, compete in your low end market with that and stop tarnishing our main line. Well, as a train dealer, the price that you get for whatever the lowest version is now, the lowest, whatever the lowest thing is you can sell, 14 C or split, whatever it is, is it really that much different in price than buying one of these brands we're talking about? Oh, yeah. So there's a significant difference still? Oh, yeah. We, we're going to, what is it, 14.2 or 0.3? Yeah, the sear two. Or yeah, the technicality of that is it actually ends up that we just rebadge everything and move it down and drop our fourteen line. But there are some new products being manufactured. DOE. What does that mean? What does that stand for? I knew yesterday. DOE. Dead on entry, but yeah, I <laughs> I knew what it, I knew what it meant. Yes, if Joe was here, he school us on all this joe was here he was here well joe is a very new train dealer joe has just now become a train dealer what hopefully hopefully he didn't mind me announcing that yeah joe's a train dealer joe didn't tell me he was a train dealer i thought he joe, was a real joe, person joe shearer is a like train dealer well train geared up for this new garbage coming along better and more than anybody um, the real reason were we were cheating on our ratings way less than anybody else. Actually, we weren't cheating at all. Linux was a big part of the problem. There were several of them that were, you know, their so-called 14 sear machines, you know, never made the 14 sear and AHRI mm -hmm. kept catching them over and over and over so bad and said, you know, look, you, you, but see, we put TXVs, you know, all our matchups are true. You can go buy products and mismatch them and screw them all up and they don't make, you know, mm -hmm. 11 sear. I mean, especially in a four or five ton, but or 12 anyway. But um, Joe knows a lot more about this than I do. And he just became a dealer two months ago. Or a month he ago. likes reading. No, he's, he's smarter than me. 
No, I mean, Joe does research. I've seen those AHR matchups where, like, they're supposed to be 14, and you look down there and there's 12. It's like, whoa, that ain't right. Or, like, well, uh, there's 18 Sears, and you look at the matchup, and it's 15.3 or something well, like that. And that's because that, you know, you have a two-ton and a five-ton span of re- – or one-and-a-half and, and five-ton of residential – equipment and if the highest sellers or the center of whatever the two and a half and the three will make the pure sear the five ton is given grace and it doesn't have to there, we've never had a four or five ton matchup that actually made 16 sear never had it maybe some four tons there's no five ton today that will make the sear that we're trying we would have to use uh, a 17 or an 18 to make 16 mm-hmm. um, because yeah, of the I, tonnage. I, I, I know what you mean. I remember going through this to try to get the sear ratings. I told a guy, I said, we're going to put in this sear. And then I went to go piece together the system. And I realized that to get the sear rating, this was a mana. You had oh, to yeah. actually get uh, the modular blower and the coil separate and match them together because none of the air handlers would meet the requirement to get right. whatever it was. 16. I think it was pump. just 16. Yeah, yeah on a heat on pump, a heat that's pump. true. Now, of course, on a fan or a furnace and a coil, you could oversize the coil mm-hmm. and get the right either variable speed, you know, get the right blower, and then you're just go type it all into AHRI and see You'll what have you it. get. You know, see You'll what have you it. get. But see, so many of them cheated on the ratings and uh, uh, you know, that's what we're told. I haven't seen proof of that, but that's what we're told in our meetings, that this is what started all this and did all this and that it wasn't us, that we didn't cheat and that we were always over. And so I had that argument with Joe at first and I said, man, I'm telling you, our 14 already made more than that. It already would have matched up and rated uh, and it's not much. So that tells you right there that if they only going to make it go to 14.2 or 14.3, that tells you that they're just claiming the 14 is not making it. So it actually needs to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't understand the whole thing and I really don't want to. Um, I just sell the product they give me. Well, I, I, the way I understood you know. it, that it, the part that I understand is about the SEER rating is that they're, they're putting it to the test in a higher static pressure like a normal static pressure. And that's the big difference. And nothing yeah. is, is good because instead of, I think it's 0.1, they're doing 0.5, yeah. which is more normal. So it was unrealistic the way the testing was done. Uh, yeah, that, there was no duck work on that unit, I yeah, guess. That's another thing. And it was just blowing, you know, and so I, it was it was a big hit in the older train dealers. None of these younger guys understood, but in one of the classes, and I brought up this commercial from the 70s where Volkswagen took a bug, a beetle, and they stripped it down and they put an 80 pound horse jockey sitting on a milk crate, holding the steering wheel with no body, no seats, no nothing. And they ran it through the desert on flat ground and they got 86 miles per gallon out of a 1972 Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> a horse jockey. Oh, and I... <laughs> Yeah, he was 80 pounds. And well, he was, you know, some kind of little 80 pound dude. Gotta maybe. get small. Yeah, that's a small I mean, guy. Yeah, for sure. You shouldn't say midget. So he wasn't. A, I don't think you can say midget anymore. Yeah, he's not an Asian, Asian midget wrestler. It's... That's <laughs> funny. That's funny to watch Asian midget wrestling. But um, I think you meant Oriental. They, no, Oriental is about an object. So if totally. you say Oriental, that means like a rug or a lampshade. Look it up. Hey, I Asian, stand corrected. Asian is a person, so I don't want to call a person an object, or I could be considered racist. I don't even know this whole conversation has the racist feel to it. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Were we supposed to talk about HVAC? You didn't tell me that. You're talking about rugs. I, I, I don't know if we're supposed to talk about HVAC, but okay. I know we're not supposed to be talking about well, rugs. Well, so Volkswagen said in the commercial, you know, we got a whopping 86 miles per gallon, but nobody really drives that way. So we're advertising an honest 25 miles per gallon. So the point of the static testing was nobody has a unit sitting up on a table with no duct work in their house. So it might have produced whatever sear that way, but mm. under an actual, and I think a more realistic 
static pressure uh, to some of these guys' work and the change outs and stuff could be about an inch. But <laughs> 0. 0.5 mm. is the target. Yeah, I had a... It's a big coil. I had a guy, one of the FSRs, come out, and he, he thought he was going to ding me on something because I was having such trouble out of this unit. Um, and it was a TAM 7 with zoning and a 20, you know, and he said, well, we're going to just, man, I'm telling you, I don't need to. I did the duct work. Now, if I had done a change out, absolutely, I would look at my static pressure, but I'm telling you. So we get there. That's the first thing we're going to do. He was a site visit. He came to help me. Mm -hmm. Punched it up on the TAM on the display. And it was a 3.2, you know. 3.2? Yeah. The static uh, pressure? I'm sorry, 0.32. Oh, I was about to say 3.2. Yeah. How did you even pull that. that off? Was it like an end cap on the front of the air? Sorry about that. Just <laughs> plugged it off and taped it up with mastic. No, but it was 0.32, you know, 0.3. So it it's gives good, you, yeah. it gives you, the, like if you look on a TAM little PD, uh, display um, that you can actually spin, by the way. So if it's downflow, you can spin it and read it. And if it's left discharge or right. Oh, yeah. 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 On the high little front panel thing. Yeah. 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 The Hyperion air handler. So, anyway, I just remember the look on his face. I said, Man, I told you, I did all the duct work in this house. It's not a change out. So, we obviously the design is 0.5, right? Mm, I mean, that's, yeah, that's for a lot of them. Yeah. That's design that is acceptable and, and highly efficient, according. And uh, because this had zoning and because of several reasons, we did a certain style of duct work and it was 0.32. And so that, that zipped him up and got him. I said, now you're, now you're ready to help me find the real problem. Uh, so it ends up that uh, they gave up too and gave me an air handler. And still to this day, we don't know. So I had already changed both boards I had already changed the EEV board and, you know, there's two boards in the TAM. I had mm -hmm. already changed those, um, changed the air handler, the problems go away. So to this day, we don't know where the breakdown was, why it was hmm. throwing error codes. Um, prior to him getting there, one of the other FSRs, we had changed the control. We had 950s back then before the 1050. We had changed the control. We had tested the drive and done through the testing process like 80,000 times it felt like. So I finally got him to come do a site visit, one of them. And he's, you know, what's your static? What's your static? I said, I don't know. I can guess. Oh, how red are flags. You, how in the world are you possibly asking me for help and you don't know the static pressure? I said, well, I guarantee you this design or less is 0.5 or less well you got no way to know that well yes i do i did the duct work i mean if yeah. somebody stuffed a t-shirt up in my coil i might have a problem but or the filter I, you know but i'm telling you i did the duct work and so i know what size it is if you want to watch more videos just like this one click on this playlist right here if you want to see our brand new video click right here if you want to find out more about the great sponsors that make this show happen click up here and to join our email list where I notify you when we're going live, click right here.